Okay, well, welcome to the Bookmap Platform webinar, and we'll go through the details in the platform, answer any questions that you have, uh, and um, understand what you're looking at in Bookmap and uh, how to start to leverage it uh, in your trading. Uh, risk disclaimer, a trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, reach out uh, to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, you can go to bookmap.com uh, for more information. You become a member there and um, there's lots of free resources. So let me show you where you can find Bookmap. Uh, it's here uh, on the home page. Uh, and um, I, I should cover as well, the um, there are two separate webinars now uh, and uh, we've made this decision uh, to uh, have uh, one webinar that's open to all all traders uh, and this webinar we're going to go through some of the details in the platform uh, some of the uh, live order flow uh, and um, then the um, uh, answer any questions that you have about the platform uh, the reason being is that um, uh, the structure we had before uh, was starting to kind of slow some people down uh, they would uh, uh, come to the webinar and wanted to learn more about, um, uh, you know, how to integrate uh, Bookmap within their trading, and uh, instead uh, they're getting bogged down within uh, just going over some basics in the platform. So uh, those that are in trial or uh, are customers or subscribers uh, at the moment, uh, then uh, in half an hour at 11 Eastern, we will have the second webinar. Uh, it's only open to those in trial. Uh, or those uh, uh, current customers, uh, so that uh, uh, that way we, we know we're reaching the, the right group uh, to go over more advanced features uh, and then how to integrate it in. So you can you can attend both uh, if you're in trial or uh, you're a current customer, uh, but uh, this one is for all, all traders. And um, uh, just uh, so you understand what what Bookmap is and uh, how uh, it can give you give you an edge here in your trading. All right. Okay, so uh, let's explore here and uh, we'll come down and come to the pricing area here. Okay, connectivity and pricing. So there are two versions of Bookmap. There's the basic version and the advanced version. 49 per month, 99 per month, build quarterly. Okay, and for each of them, you get a 14 day trial period. All right, now there's also these two here that are a package deal with DX feed. Okay, so you will need, uh, if you are connecting to uh, futures data, then you will need a uh, data provider. Uh, they are listed here uh, for connecting Bookmap. You can see them all here, okay? And there are also partner brokers that we have as well. Uh, and um, the uh, uh, DX feed is just a, a, a partnership we have with DX feed. And this will allow you uh, access to U.S. Uh, equities, okay? And uh, you can get the DX feed with the basic or advanced. It's just that uh, you would uh, uh, purchase it separately. And, and here you get a little bit of a discount with the package deal, okay? Uh, the differences between the book, book map basic and advanced uh, are the add-ons and the one-click trading here for the most part. There are some other differences as well, but those, those are the big uh, big differences. Uh, Bruce, the uh, the second uh, session is recorded. Uh, in fact, um, I need to send an email out uh, to you guys uh, for that uh, for that recording. Okay, I recorded it yesterday as well. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So that's where you can find Bookmap. Give it a try. Uh, if you log into Bookmap in the portal, uh, you will uh, you know have uh, access here to all of the. Uh, uh, components and features and education, uh, the video snippets, recorded webinars, etc. Okay, you can also find them uh, here uh, on our YouTube page. Okay, there's the features and components here in the playlist, the order flow video snippets, which are very short, concise videos that go through the phenomena that we see here daily uh, in the webinars, just a very, very concise version of it. You can also see here the educational course that we put together uh, it, uh, parts one through four. I uh, highly recommend you go through that. Uh, uh, but uh, do this when you're in trial. Uh, it would be uh, it would uh, be more beneficial for you uh, when you're in trial, so that uh, you can start to play around with Bookmap um, at the same moment uh, that you're learning about uh, what it's showing you and how to use it. 
okay? The recorded platform webinars are here, this, this webinar, and then you can see uh, Professional Trader here, uh, Futures Trader 71, uh, has some videos as well. Okay, you can also follow us on Twitter here. Okay, all right, well, let's uh, let's jump in and uh, take a look at the uh, Ah, uh, the S and P. I guess um, you know. I mean, we have some movement here uh, in the uh, in the charts. You can see the bonds are are going crazy uh, to the upside here. Gold as well, or and and the euro. Uh, oh no, the euro's not really moving. Um, and um, uh, let's see, the uh, the ES sold off, but it's kind of hovering now uh, as well. And the uh, Nasdaq also sold off, but it's hovering down here, and it did not make a new low. So that's surprising. Uh, and um, the uh, oil as well also sold off. Okay, so uh, right down where you can see yesterday where it broke from uh, to the upside. Okay, same with the ES and the NQ. All right. All right, so um, yeah, let's let's take a look at the ES. Uh, that's fine. Um, and um, uh, all right, so uh, here's the book map chart. And uh, let me go through the basics here. Okay, and I'm going to, uh, are, there, are there a lot of new traders in here? Uh, if anyone can, um, uh, you know, let me know here who, who's new to the webinar here. Uh, would love to, uh, love to hear it. Okay, yeah, Bill, welcome. Okay. All right, yep. Uh, Jason, okay, and John, excellent, okay. All right. Well, welcome. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, the reason I ask, and in, in, in we go through the basics here, uh, this is exactly the uh, the intent uh, to show you what book map uh, is displaying. Okay. So we're going to start with this candlestick chart, and um, we're all familiar with the candlestick chart. Uh, we have also a uh, a volume uh, sub panel here. Okay. So this is a five minute candlestick chart of the S&P, uh, you can see the open here and the volume that picked up, immediate drop, okay? So this is open high, low, close in a five minute period. So we're all familiar with that. Um, but there's there's a massive problem here. Uh, and that problem is uh, there's so much data here that we're just not seeing. And um, uh, looking at maybe some, uh, you know, some wicks and, uh, uh, you know, how these periods open and close, it does give some insight, but uh, it, it can be so erroneous. Uh, you know, you're basically looking at 5% of the data here uh, in the marketplace, uh, just with this view, okay? We don't know about um, uh, where the volume traded, uh, how much, what type of volume. Uh, we have our, our sub panel here, and that's good, that's helpful, uh, but uh, we have no idea where the traders are uh, on this candlestick chart, okay? We just know the period, uh, and, and that's a problem. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start to layer on some of the information. And I'm gonna just start with the best bid and offer. Okay, and uh, you can see it now here. Uh, this is the current market window. The dashed green line is the best bid. The dashed red is the best offer. And this number here is the last traded volume. Okay, this section over here is the dome. Uh, and then the, um, uh, uh, you can see everything to the left of this vertical white line here is historical, all right? And uh, right on that one line, we can see that the one, this one candle is now forming, okay? Is following that best bid and offer. Um, okay, so now uh, just just with the best bid and offer, it's uh, already, uh, we get more insight, okay? So let me expand the chart a little bit and you can uh, quickly zoom uh, in bookmap. You can use the tools up here, uh, but you can also just use your center mouse wheel and you can very, very quick, quickly zoom in and out, okay? All right, Patrick, welcome. You're new to, to trading as well here, uh, to Bookmap. Uh, yeah, so you're interested in Tradevate? Uh, well, I think with Tradevate, they they offer um, uh, the twofold. Uh, you you can um, you can get the desktop uh, along with the web version. Okay, so you might want to might want to inquire with them, uh, but uh, the desktop version will be with CQG. Okay, and I believe that allows you access to the web version as well. All right. Okay. So uh, historical best bid and offer, uh, we can see it here. Now we're starting to understand a little bit, a little bit more. Um, we're, we're starting to understand and, and, and gather some information on some of the microstructure 
about how price uh, started to pause and go, you know, have a retest here and then a drop down and then kind of test back up and then drop down again. That's what uh, was inside this candlestick. Okay. But we still don't know the volume. Okay. So that, that's, uh, that's the issue. We can just see the, the volume here uh, in the, uh, in the sub chart. Okay. And we have no idea what type of volume and that's going to be critical. So let's turn on the volume dots. Okay. Now, uh, and let's make these just a little, little bit bigger. Okay. Just give a little bit of uh, size to it. Okay. Now we have a much more complete picture and this is just the volume alone. Uh, and it's very much like a footprint chart. Okay. You can see where the volume took place within the price action at the price levels. Okay. Uh, and, um, uh, you can see the uh, the circle size here is basically um, it's a graphical representation of those numeric values in a footprint chart. Now you can get those those values with the rollover tool. Uh, just hover over the dot, and you can see uh, how much volume is trading here. You get the date, the time, what was on the ask, and the volume at that price level. All right. And uh, there's another. Um, Zoom trick here, let's click on the move tool here, the hand icon. I'm gonna hover over this little area here and I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, I'm just gonna use my center mouse wheel. Okay, so now uh, we can really see what unfolded uh, within this, um, and let's go actually a little bit further. Okay, so each vertical dotted line is one minute. Uh, and then our five minute period is here. Now we have an understanding of where the volume really took place and where the traders are being committed or committing themselves into this market. Okay. And we can see that uh, it's a battle back and forth here. There's some buying and selling. Uh, it's pretty equal. The pie display here. Uh, let me zoom into this area right here uh, and show you what's going on. Okay. Uh, the pie display uh, is just that so many trades uh, took place here uh, so quickly uh, that uh, we don't have enough space in the in the pixelated screen to show it to you. So we just give you the overall size to give you the reference to how much volume. And this was, you know, over a thousand contracts that traded. And I can continue to zoom in though. As I continue to zoom in, notice how I'm breaking apart all of those trades. Okay. So now we can see really what constituted uh, that trading activity. Okay? And this is just millisecond level. And still we can see algorithmic activity here, okay? Hitting the bid pretty hard here, and then hitting it again here, okay? Not the most mechanical here. I mean, we can see other, other uh, uh, examples uh, very, very clearly. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, you'll see it all the time here. Uh, and um, now as I start to zoom back out though, note how uh, I give you the, or bookmap gives you the overall here of this volume dot, all right? So you can understand uh, w really what, what happened here. And it's like basically two thirds of this was selling volume and one third was aggressive buying. You can see by the dots here, an aggressive buy uh, is a, a market buy. Someone hit the market buy button, they crossed the spread. That's the aggression. Uh, and uh, they took liquidity off of the best offer. And the red is they took liquidity uh, with a market sell on the best bid. All right. And as I zoom out, you can see we just visually aggregate this data. All the data is still plotted. Each event is still plotted. Uh, so for those of you trading uh, algorithmically or mechanically, uh, you probably will be uh, zooming in here to really check out what, look at how we can just uh, take apart all those trades. Um, and you can understand what um, uh, occurred in this area here and see how your algorithm uh, is, uh, is behaving, okay? That's actually why Bookmap was developed in the first place was to test uh, algos, okay? Anyway, uh, but we give you the overall uh, when you zoom out so you have an understanding uh, just by visuals here uh, of what occurred, okay? So, Without a doubt, I mean, the majority of the trading took place on the, on the lower half of this candlestick, and that's insightful, okay? And we can also see the, the type. I mean, there's a lot of buying, uh, but then the selling picked up right down in this area here, okay? Uh, we're probably going to see a lot of absorption here, 
okay? That's the next thing to go over. The, um, uh, we've got the volume, uh, we've got the, uh, the type of volume it is, the size, and the location. Uh, and um, now let's go over uh, the auction process, the intent of the traders at these areas. And that we usually see in the dome. All right now, there's a problem though with the dome. This is the book map dome here, and we also have uh, this is the dome here in, in bar representation, and then we have some volume columns here. Okay, and I've split that out, but um, let me right click and uh, uh, aggregate that back together. All right, there you go. Um, all right, so the um, uh, uh, the dome here. Okay, this is your best bid and offer. And then you can see the depth here on the offer and the depth here on the bid. All right. And uh, what's beyond these two white lines is historical uh, best bid and offer. We don't know until we go up and refresh that data. But this is the lit book in this area right here. Okay. 10 deep on the bid, 10, 10 deep on the offer. Okay. Now the problem here is uh, uh, if you uh, trade the dome, uh, then you understand that uh, there's a lot to remember here. Uh, and you're just going to have to do it mentally. Uh, you're going to have to remember these areas. You're going to have to remember the high liquidity that was there. Uh, did they pull? Did they stay in the book? Uh, did they get filled? What about the areas behind it or in front of it? Were they were they less bearish uh, or, or were they bearish or bullish uh, depending on the, how they behave in that area? Uh, and um, and then uh, uh, what about on the uh, on the bid? Uh, were they pressing uh, going the other way? And then you'll have to remember those areas when you re when price returns back to those uh, those zones, those price zones. Okay? So that's the issue here because you can see as I scroll forward, the numbers change and then that previous number is gone. So we don't have that recording of that data, and that's where Bookmap can help you because we can turn on the heat map here. So what the heat map has done, okay, and let me go back to the um, current market here, okay, because I want to show uh, the um, uh, this window here, okay. In this window here, the current market window, uh, you can see there's this, this, this grayscale heat map, and the um, liquidity here uh, is uh, uh, higher uh, when it gets brighter. Okay, so these are very bright areas down here, 1,600 uh, contracts. Uh, in these areas here, they're starting to get bright here at 1,400, okay, 1,443 over here at 72. Uh, and um, so we're, we're getting some insight here uh, with the high liquidity. Now, you can change the heat map uh, to configure it any way that you like. If you want to look at little brighter areas, well, you can do that and just play around with these, okay. And, uh, and you get a lot more insight here, potentially, for you. A uh, little flip of the book right there, notice that. Um, and high liquidity that was here on the offer has now flipped over to the bid on 71. And we see aggressive buying here. These guys are going to be trapped down below and uh, try to run the stops maybe up above here into 73. Okay. Anyway, a quick analysis on that just because this uh, popped in like that, and uh, it's nice to see that phenomena. Uh, it's just uh, great, great stuff. Um, anyway, uh, the um, uh, so you, now you can start to, to gauge the um, intent of these traders bidding and offering, providing liquidity. All right, and let me bring down that setting a little bit. So we just want to target some of that high liquidity, okay? And the reason being is the high liquidity, usually um, uh, these are the longer term players, okay, that stay in the market and they mean to trade at these levels, okay? Now that really depends though, uh, but we can still gauge their intent when we come up and trade into these areas. So a, a lot of traders, um, uh, they say, well, you know, the, the liquidity here, uh, it, you know, it's all fake. You don't know. Well, that, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it's a FIFO market, first in, first out. If you want to get filled with large size, uh, you're going to be using limit orders or hidden orders, and uh, you're going to be waiting at your price level. 
all right? Because once you start to hit that market buy button, you're gonna be driving price against you because you're gonna be sweeping all of the liquidity at each price level, all right? So you see a lot of absorption with the larger players like down in here, okay? And this gives you a lot of insight to what's going on. Okay, so let's uh, zoom into this area and uh, let's see, you know, did they stay in the book or did they pull? Okay, a lot of it pulled surprisingly here, but we, we also see the transactions that took place. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the uh, one more layer here, the indicator um, uh, display. And uh, I'm just curious because every time I see large uh, players like this starting to pull liquidity, but you see transactions, I'm looking for iceberg orders, okay? And actually, I don't see many here. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, I was kind of uh, anticipating seeing quite a bit here in these, in these areas. Uh, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit lower. Not really. The icebergs were actually here. Uh, beforehand, 626 and 191, and there is a 107 here uh, at this level. Okay, so anyway, uh, now we're uh, uh, starting to uh, uh, understand uh, the intent of these traders at some of these levels. All right, a lot of transactions, a lot of sell side, uh, but look at all of this volume here, and it moves price like two or three ticks. All right, so. Um, uh, and then we go sideways for a bit, uh, and then we can see that they're starting to lift the offer with some volume on the other side, okay? And then what that leads to is what we just saw here. Okay, we did get one more little rotation here, and, it, and you can see the breakout here. All right, so anyway, now, now you've got a complete picture of the limit order book. Uh, you can see where they're bidding and offering. And their intent. Uh, these guys up here, okay, did they they stay in the book? Uh, no, I mean uh, they they uh, were one tick away and they started to pull. As you can see, as it got darker here, that's what these striations represent. So if I hover over here, it says date, time on the ask, 1,400 contracts, uh, 1,432, and then if I just go over into the darker area, they went down to 1,377, and then they bumped it up, 1,408 and then back down to 1373, okay? So they're not, they don't really have, uh, I mean, they're still staying here until this point, uh, but they are pulling uh, as well. And uh, that's showing kind of bearish behavior, all right? Nice iceberg here, uh, as you can see on the, uh, on the best bid. And, um, uh, and then we saw uh, a couple of other uh, little phenomena that uh, we go over all the time, and that is the flip of the book. Right? They were here on the offer, they flip over to the bid, and here they are aggressively again on the bid. And we saw it here as well. Okay, and this is a this is a better example, right? Right in this area here. 1500 contracts, and they're pulling. So I'm still anticipating movement to the upside. And I'm targeting, well, we we originally were targeting 73, and we're we're already there. Okay. Uh, I don't know, let's see, where's the, it opened here. So, you know, if, uh, if we continue to the upside, um, then uh, I'm looking for this uh, 76 up here in this area. Okay, and you can already see traders lining up, uh, providing liquidity there. All right. Okay, so now we've got a complete picture of the order flow, not just the transactions, where they're taking place in the tape, uh, and what type of, of volume it is and uh, who's winning the battle and the speed of the market, all of these important uh, 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 distinctions that you really, really don't see in a, in a candlestick chart. Uh, and, uh, well, you don't see it all. I mean, there's some speed here you see in a candlestick, but you don't, this little micro swing area here, uh, you, you don't see that, right? It's lost. Uh, you get all of that here. Um, and uh, why is that important? Well, because what usually occurs here uh, is um, we, we trade in ranges, and then there's a breakout of that range, uh, and then um, you know it's usually between high areas of liquidity. Okay, high areas of liquidity here at 68, and then it was up here at this uh, uh, 71 and three quarters. Okay, then they got aggressive here and actually started to press down on price. Uh, looking to me like um, 
uh, you know, they're, uh, this, now this is the distinction here. And we, we covered this uh, just the other day, uh, yesterday and Friday, I believe, or Thursday in, in, in good detail uh, about making that distinction between that longer term liquidity that has the intent to trade and that shorter term liquidity that does not. Okay, they're looking to skew the auction Okay, slam in here with high liquidity, uh, but uh, only for a short period and then pull it. Okay, when there is all of a sudden a lot more supply than there is demand, well, you know, uh, price is probably going to drift to the downside. Okay, and uh, in this case, they uh, uh, who knows if they were successful or not. I mean, you can see them pulling right in these little areas here just perfectly. Uh, and uh, and then we see a big iceberg order go off here. This is kind of what I was looking for uh, earlier, All right? But um, uh, anyway, and then they get aggressive here, bidding up at a higher area, bidding up again, yet again at a higher area, and then we see that flip of the book. Uh, we are now in a new trading range up in this area. All right. Okay. All right. So um, I think. Uh, uh, any any questions? Uh, what you're looking at in Bookmap? Uh, just trying to start off very simply, but you can see. Uh, and um, you know, I, I'm I'm not trying to get uh, uh, too advanced uh, here. It's just I'm just looking at the structure, the microstructure, uh, how the auction is behaving within these structures. Uh, are they adding? Are they pulling? I want to know understand their intent. And I'm also looking at where they're actually transacting. And that, that's basically it. Uh, and, uh, and putting that all together. So in your dome, I mean, we still see 1,355 contracts here. Okay. If we get a retest of this area, uh, I'm very curious uh, to see if uh, they're going to stay in that book and uh, remain here and want to get filled uh, and support price in this new trading range. Okay, but we'll gauge that when we come down to it. But right now, they're staying in here. And we're trading between the high liquidity here at 71.5 and, and 74. Okay, let's see, John. Um, does it also work on higher time frame, like 15-minute, uh, one-hour? Absolutely. This is a great thing. Uh, and um, uh, I, I really enjoy it. Although, like, uh, you can only see that, uh, well, I opened my book map here uh, before 8 a.m., uh, and we have three hours of data here, okay? So when you open up your book map, you start collecting the data. Now, if you you know, you can collect it and keep your book map open all week. A lot of traders do that, uh, and you have a week's worth of data. Uh, but um, uh, absolutely, I mean, uh, uh, there are many traders looking on higher time frames at this data, uh, and uh, let me show you why. Okay. We're just going to uh, really uh, target that higher liquidity here. Okay, this is why coming down to a level of their interest, they want to see if traders are lined up, and you can see that here. Okay, off of this time frame, half hour between each vertical dotted line here. Okay, and uh, you can start to also gauge targets on that higher time frame. 74, 76, all right? So, um, uh, you know, you'd be looking at your, uh, your trading plan. Uh, you'd be looking at, uh, let's take the candles off for a moment. Uh, and um, uh, starting to understand some of these areas that we pierced through it, but they lined up in the book down here. Uh, and, um, and then we can see them, uh, you know, lift the offer here. We do get a pullback. And where do we get a pullback to? Uh, you know, we don't come back down and test the lows. Uh, instead, we test only to this little, uh, this high volume node here, uh, this little cluster of trading here. Uh, that's where the initiated uh, buying uh, occurred. And uh, you can see the sellers didn't take them on. And then again, uh, the, uh, uh, the buyers here uh, lift the offer pretty aggressively. Okay. All right. So that's the, the one of the beauties here is that dome data now is useful on the higher time frame. Now you can read the uh, the order book on a higher time frame. Uh, and um, 
yeah, just uh, start to um, understand how liquidity behaves, just like you understand how volume behaves. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day, and uh, we will continue on uh, tomorrow. And um, see you. And if you guys are um, uh, uh, in trial, we'll see you uh, immediately in the uh, in the following webinar. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming. We'll catch up with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.